Hi folks, Mr Woodward here, and we're just going to continue some of the work that you started on school for your year 8 unit on great speeches. Now I know lots of you have looked at different speeches, you've looked at George Bush's speech, Winston Churchill, different uh, speeches from Shakespeare, and many of you do know basic rhetorical de devices, which we've taught using the acronym AFOREST, so alliteration, facts, opinion, repetition, emotive language or emphasis, statistics and triplets. So. What we're going to do today is uh, take a look at a really, really, really persuasive speech from George, uh, not George Bush, uh, the man who followed him, in fact, Barack Obama, and from there we're going to figure out how exactly it's persuasive. Now, the speech that you can find on Show My Homework, which I'll attach in a link, is Barack Obama's inauguration speech, which is the speech that he made upon being given the title of president. Now every president gives one of these speeches and what they really try to do is build up the public behind them, to persuade them, to show them and give them faith that they will be a great president. So together let's have a read of the Barack Obama speech. So, my fellow citizens, I stand here today humbled by the task before us, grateful for the trust that you have bestowed, mindful of the sacrifices borne by our ancestors. I thank President Butch, Bush who was the uh, president prior to Barack Obama, for his service to our nation, as well as the generosity and cooperation he has shown throughout the transition. What he means by that is, you know, the, the, the presidency shifting from Bush to Obama. 44 Americans have now taken the presidential oath, have, have sworn in as presidents. The words have been spoken during rising tides of prosperity and the still waters of peace. Yet, every so often, the oath is taken amidst gathering clouds and raging storms. At these moments, America is carried on not simply because of the skill or vision of those in high office, but because we, the people, have remained faithful to the ideals of our forebearers and true to our founding documents. So it has been, so it must be, with this generation of Americans. Now, it's a very persuasive speech. I can feel myself getting into it as I read it there. I mean, I can almost imagine, you know, being in, in Washington, D.C. when this was delivered and, and listening to Obama and really having faith in him as a president and thinking that he was a great guy and really suited to the task. Um, one thing that you could do, uh, there are a lot of challenging words in there, some that you might not know. One thing that you can do straight away is go through the text and underline any words that you're unfamiliar with and then annotate, and by that I mean label, those with a dictionary definition. And you can find the definitions on dictionary.com. So we could have in there bestowed, we could have in there maybe humbled. What does humbled mean? Prosperity is another word as well. Anything else? That's pretty much it. Maybe generation as well. Maybe you know cooperation and generosity are words that you might want to define. You probably know, but sacrifice, what does it mean? All of those will give you a greater understanding of the text. Now, when you've done that, turn your attention to one of the slides on the PowerPoint, which will be on Show My Homework. It's a mix and match activity that contains uh, a list of different rhetorical devices, and all you have to do is match those devices with the definition. Then, once you've done that, turn your attention back to Barack Obama's presidential address and work through this text line by line underlining and explaining any words or devices, rhetorical devices, that are persuasive. Any words or sentences that give us faith that Obama will be a good president. So let's start together on our modeling. So I stand here today humbled by the task before us, grateful for the trust that you have bestowed, mindful of the sacrifices borne by our ancestors. So what he's saying there is basically he's aware of the history of being a president. He recognises that America is a great country and he wants to continue that trend in behaviour. So let's take a look. I mean, this pronoun, us, instantly that creates a sense of community, a sense of you know, a group feeling that Obama and the people who are listening to him are on this task together. So he's galvanising their support. He's trying to get them on side. So let's just do a little line off of us, and let's say creates a sense of community. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer here, really. It's, it's all about moving through the text and figuring out how it's persuasive. You might not be able to find devices. You might not be able to find alliteration, facts, opinion, repetition. Instead, what you might be able to find is just words that you think are persuasive, that might mean something to you, or might mean something to the audience that were listening at the time. So creates a sense of community. Yeah, that's quite good. Nice work. Grateful for the trust that you have bestowed. Again, it's, it's that pronoun you. 
a form of direct address where the president is directly talking to the audience. Right? Mindful of the sacrifices borne by our ancestors. You know, it's almost like he's, he's using a, a list of pronouns here to, tar- to try and create that sense of community. Us, you, our. Really, really nice. All of those things together. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. Again, we've got another pronoun there. As well as the generosity and cooperation he has shown throughout this transition. I mean, it's not a device, but you can just think about the context of what he's saying and and what he means. He's thanking a president who has just served America. So he's, he's trying to show that he is grateful, that he cares, and that he respects the man who came before him. There's a lot of political competition between people who compete to be president, you know. They might you know, disagree with each other's policies, they might be from different political parties, but what Obama's saying is basically that regardless of our differences, I respect you as a person and I think that you were a good president. So basically what he's showing there is respect for the previous president. Now, I'm going to leave you to do the rest on your own. Go through the other paragraph and this very short paragraph here. Consider as well when you do this one, the sentence structures as well. Why are they so short? and What's the effect of that on us as listeners? Go through that, pick out any of the rhetorical devices or any of the persuasive words. And when you've done that, write in your exercise books, you know, write on bits of paper, on a Word document, the answer to this question. How is uh, Barack Obama's inauguration speech persuasive to the people who are listening? I'll give you some starters on Show My Homework, and I'll be back with you shortly. Thank you very much.